Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Will Comer and Voices by Corey. Hello and welcome to the New Grounds Podcast 2021. 2021! Woo! Yay! We made it. It's a new year. We already did our recap episode before this, so we can't do another one of those. We have to actually do a real episode. Oh, dang. Do we really have to? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I mean, we we don't really have to. We could just I could just play the recap episode again. Like live right now. <laughs> I mean, I guess the the death of 2020 isn't the death of NGP because NGP doesn't die. That's right. Yeah. You cut off one head and two more heads pop up. That's kind of <laughs> literally how it works. Whenever one of us gets too busy, it's just like, hey, we got a new host. And uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, this is this is a chill one. It's just uh, you and me, Corey. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I had a, a pretty busy work week, so I am definitely enjoying some quality time with a good friend here on a Saturday afternoon. It is very nice. Who's the friend? Well, uh, it's everyone in the NGP chat. If you thought that we were friends, then <laughs> joke's on you, bud. Oh. <laughs> I, I, did. I did. I'm just kidding. Well, That's I okay. love you. I love you so I No, it's okay. You don't have to just say it You know, if you don't feel it. No, That's all right. trust me. I feel it in the girds of my loins. <laughs> well if you put it that way <laughs> we got some fun stuff it's been a uh, first of all how was your new year it was pretty fun you know thankfully um my my wife was supposed to work on new year's eve and she worked for four hours and they said hey you can go home so i actually got to spend new year's eve counting down the final seconds of god awful 2020 with my family Got the the first New Year kiss with her, and nice. then kissed my daughter after that, and yeah, it was fun. That's good. It sucks that she had to work on New Year's Eve, but at least that she was able to get out early. Yeah, like it, we were pretty bummed because, like, well, like we've always pretty much spent New Year's Eve together. We haven't had uh, the mishap of you know her working all the time, so it was mm-hmm. going to be nice to actually you know. Especially because we just moved to Boise, so it's kind of been uh, the the last end of 2020 was kind of like a a whirlwind for us. So it w- it would have been a nice moment to celebrate the end of the year together as a family. And when we yeah. when we got the word that she came that she was coming back home, I'm like oh yes, thank you God, it's awesome. So we got to <laughs> spend some time together. Her and I drank some uh, Jack Daniels and Coke, and my daughter drank apple juice. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Looks kind of the same. You're you're in Boise. What's the deal with Newgrounds people going to Idaho? Is there something Newgroundsy about Idaho? Goodell is from Idaho. You're in Idaho. I'm pretty sure Josh is Josh Idaho too. No, Josh is in Josh is in Colorado, but you know that's where all the hoes go to because you know I, <laughs> Idaho. Goodell's oh, the hoes. The all the hoes. You can only say that <laughs> once. You you blew it. <laughs> No, if, if I can't be but the yes. only hoe out here. Everyone's a hoe if you're in, in uh, Idaho. It, it just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Mig Moog is saying in the chat, Idaho, are you are you in Idaho too, Mig? Oh. Or Moog, if that's your real name. No, Wait. you're not. Oh, oh, you're just a fan of Idaho. You just enjoy the concept of Idaho. Everyone just loves our potatoes. We have the best potatoes in the world. That's that's no joke. That's a fucking fact, baby. Mig says he's a New York boy. He's an Idaho enthusiast. So you're just kind of in the big city dreaming of the open fields, the big space, the silence, the stars. Instead of dreaming about the big apple, you're dreaming about the big potato. The big potato. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much less cool when you say it that way. <laughs> uh, Wanda is Idaho, I believe. Wanda boy. Oh, really? Well, who yeah, I've I guess. maybe met once. Like, I remember, um, I, think, I think it was Wanda boy. I saw him post on Twitter one day. It was him, Kawhi Sprite, and I think Cam and, and a few others. Like, yeah, new mm. grounds meet, uh, meet up in Idaho. I'm like, yo, where the fuck are you guys at? Like, oh, we're up in Coeur d'Alene, which is like six hours north from where I'm at. I'm like, damn it. It's like if I was closer, <laughs> I would come hang out with you guys. But, you know, I had to miss out. Only six hours and you couldn't do it? You can't make that trip for your fellow new grounders? What is six hours? Come on. My wife would have been uh, pretty pissed off at me if I just said, hey, I'm going to go meet some people from online. You know, six hours north of the quarter lane. She's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I went to a Newgrounds meetup once, and I think I was like 13 or 14. And 
It was in Atlanta. It was in a bowling alley. And there was, uh, Lewis was there, Jonas was there, Afro Ninja. I, Afro Ninja was there, but I've talked to him since, and he, like, says that he absolutely was not. And I think that's insane. But nobody actually showed up. It was supposed to be a big event where a lot of adults and a lot of kids, and, you know, everybody gets together and hangs. And then, you know, classic uh, Newgrounds meetup is that, like, the kids will go home, and then the adults will go to a bar and continue. But nobody was there except them and me. I was the only outsider. Really? <laughs> so it was just Lewis and uh, some of the big guys from Newgrounds at the time and me, some 13-year-old asshole who's just like, hi, guys, I'm here, too. <laughs> They're I like, where the fuck is Chris today. Hansen at? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Run! <laughs> um, Lewis says I'm not technically allowed to say this live, but he uh, brought Newgrounds stickers to give to everybody, uh, you know, just one to each person. And since I was the only person, he just handed me the stack. <laughs> He just said, don't tell anybody, but just take the whole freaking thing <laughs> to this day. <laughs> I think I still have new grad stickers. <laughs> hey, that that's very valuable. You can't sell those. Do not sell those. That's valuable. Coming from Lewis, that's very special. It's priceless. It is priceless. It's very special. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm good. I'm glad your New Year's Eve was good. My New Year's Eve was good. Tried to, we went to safely see some some good friends of ours and they have a toddler and as I'm sure you probably experienced at one point in your life, the toddler was screaming bloody murder the entire day, night, and following day. Oh, yeah. In the best way. <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> well, at least, I hope she, the toddler was at least screaming at the top of, of their lungs at midnight to make it seem like they were part of the celebration. you know. Or hopefully they were down to sleep by then so you guys could at least enjoy <laughs> the, the celebration. <laughs> no, not so lucky. That baby is a late late night baby <laughs> god i know i know those late nights waking up at two yeah. in the morning too <laughs> he's the kind of kid though that doesn't speak words yet but he speaks very elaborate long babble phrases oh so he'll just be like he'll come up to you and like point and you going i said what a bell i said and you're like that hurts why would you say that <laughs> That, How dare you? It's like wow, like you kiss your mother with that mouth. It's like you're you're very smart for your age. How old are you again? You just solved one of the world's <laughs> most biggest problems of all time. Good for you, kid. <laughs> you have a blackboard over. <laughs> start scribbling on it frantically. You got it. You're a genius. You did it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's times where I I have to play a dumb with my daughter. She's she's getting she's getting there with putting together full sentences, but there's times mm. where I just don't understand what she'll say. She'll come up to me, Daddy. Yes, honey. I want to have it together. Okay, that, that, that's great, honey. And then she'll get right I, on it. I turn away from her and then she looks at me like, hey, asshole, I just told you I want something. Go get it for me. Yeah. It's like, no offense, but I'm waiting. You know, whenever you're ready. It's like, I told you. I kind what. of asked you exactly what I wanted. In, in, in those situations, I tell her, I'm like, show me I, I didn't understand what you said i'm sorry show me what you want and she'll take my hand and, and show me so it's it <laughs> it is a it is a very gratifying thing when your kid is actually able to communicate communicate with you properly and not just cry you have to figure out that they poop their diaper you know right <laughs> they'll yeah they'll tell you in pointed terms exactly how much they poop the diaper and then they'll expect you to still do it but it's more of a power thing at that point they <laughs> want to know that you're below them that's why they make you do it it's like she looks me dead in the <laughs> eyes daddy poo poo oh you <laughs> butthole fine dun, let's dun, go dun. <laughs> or or it's or it's more so oh god go tell your mom <laughs> so yeah. you can handle it <laughs> you can't deal with this shit <laughs> also when you did the impression of her just now and i went it, it it made me think of the meme kid who goes did you ever think maybe that you could do you want you would do the you could do the, the thing to you to do to want to do to you to me to us to you to do so much that you could do anything yeah nailed, nailed it first try <laughs> just rambling for two minutes it's a, you know it's a once you do yeah yeah <laughs> You can, it's so sad because he's he's struggling so hard to say the right words and and then when he finally does you could tell he's just so proud of himself that he got the right words <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that one it still makes me laugh to this day uh the guys in the chat are going crazy on exactly how she's telling you that the poop is there and it's very funny oh because we're, we're going through, we're going through that process of teaching her to use the potty and she goes pee just mm -hmm. fine but when it comes to poop she just doesn't want to. She's just like, I, yeah. I don't know if it's just, you know, 
getting to that comfort stage, but you know, she, she's just going through that stage and she loves looking at us and telling us directly poo poo. Like she, she wanted to be like, ah, I can go poo. She just goes poo poo. Like you son of a deep voice. Uh, <laughs> like you're going to be a good voice actor. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's in the genes. <laughs> but I mean, think about it. If you're, you know, picture you, you've never had to use a toilet before. As far as you've known, you've always just like pooped whenever, wherever, carelessly, free in the wind, and then somebody will handle it for you. What initiative is there for you to do anything else? I mean, like, I feel like if I wasn't putty trained, I probably would have just gone with it. You know, <laughs> just walk around with a huge lump in your ass all day. And like, yeah, hey. just like it's fine. Somebody's gonna handle it. It's like, Will, what's wrong? <laughs> uh, it's no big deal. I just got shit in my ass. What? I just got some. I just, I, you know, poo poo, <laughs> as I used to say. Poo poo, just poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things, though, uh, potty training is you have to encourage the kid at all times like when they use the toilet that they're doing something good. So when she goes pee, we act like it's New Year's Eve. We're like, yeah, all right, good job. <laughs> and Clapping. Then, and then we give her um, like a little Nestle chocolate chip as like a mm-hmm. little little congratulatory treat for going pee and using the potty like a big girl. So you get, <laughs> you're giving her incentive. Like if you do this, you're going to get a little chocolate chip. For, for being a yeah. girl. So it is tough, man. It, it is exhausting. <laughs> I can only imagine. So uh, new grounds, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we yeah. talk about it some more. It, it, I could talk about kids being funny all day and night, but we should t- probably talk about new grounds. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff's going on. I feel like everybody in the community is like, has a fire under their butt right now to just get shit done in 2021. And we got contests. Tom is still keeping this tablet thing going. He's oh, going to be giving out tablets until the, until Amazon is out of tablets. I can't believe he's giving away so many. <laughs> like, how many is he on? Is he like on like his forty fourth giveaway or something like that? See, I was trying to find it. I can't find the number. I can't. I don't think he's like counting. I don't think he cares about like racking up the numbers. But like, I wonder if you if you go to the news. I feel like if you read how many posts say drawing ta- oh duh drawing tablet forty four. I'm an idiot. It's right here in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling like a moron. <laughs> 44 is the That's number. That's why I said 44. <laughs> and yet I still found it before the chat. That's the embarrassing thing. I, I'm assuming he's given away more than just 44 tablets though, right? I'm, like, Doesn't he usually give, give it away to more than just one person per day? I, I don't think so. I think it's one each. It says today's tablet recipient oh. is Little Lucky Link. Little Lucky Link has been using a small Wacom bamboo tablet for the past decade to gradually lost functionality. Been doing a lot of traditional painting, so it's good. He kind of does a little biopic of whoever he's going to be giving to, which is cool. Yeah. And, and, and you know, Josh and I talked about it on, on my first episode. I, I love what Tom's doing. And I love seeing all the alumni Newgrounds members giving back to a community of new animators and new illustrators who are trying to get themselves out there. Yeah. What has blown my mind is, you know, as a lot of people know about the controversy with Ego Raptor, you know, him giving back to new grounds yeah. and saying, Tom, I'm, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to give tablets. I want you to help out the new kids. It was very touching. It's like a- after all the stuff that, you know, that's kind of gone through with him, like you see him giving back to the community that helped him get to where he was. And then, of course, mm-hmm. you see other big name people giving back. It, it shows that they care about new grounds and they care about the success of the new people trying to come up. So the fact that yeah. Tom is still doing this every single day, and I think he's been doing it since like mid November. It, it's cool. right. It, it's, it's cool saying that he wants to help people get to where they want to be, you know, in, in their careers, he wants to see them grow. And that's, that's why he is one of the best people of any online community. Tom is a legend. And if you try to talk trash on him, it's like you're talking trash on God. <laughs> you know, he, he, he is by far one of the greatest, nicest people to ever existed online and just mm-hmm. in general. So it, it's really cool to see. And talking about like investing in your own community, you know, you if you want a good fan base or a good community, what are you going to do? Not just well, not just like promote their stuff, which is good, but you haven't you don't have a tablet or you have a bad tablet. But now you have a tablet. Newgrounds gave you this tablet. I mean, you just earned yourself a loyal customer. You know what I mean? Like, that's somebody I can imagine being like, I really appreciate Newgrounds. They got me here. They helped me make my art. And the art's going to go right back to the website and keep supporting it. So, like, you're kind of also just 
investing yourself a little good loyal community for doing something like that which i think is cool no yeah absolutely and 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 just going back to how awesome tom is it it just reminds me of of a story um i was talking to a fellow voice actor the other day and she was telling me that uh, like when she was starting out as a voice actress on new grounds um like tom was talking about highlighting um i think animators and actually voice actors and he was doing a giveaway and he had no mm-hmm. idea about what to give away for the voice actors so she looked up um, like a blue Yeti microphone or something like that. And she sent it over to Tom saying like, Hey Tom, I think this would be a good idea for a giveaway for voice actors. Send them a, a you know, a nice startup microphone and give them the opportunity to have a, a very good quality first mic. Well, yeah. a- apparently she sent him the wish list from her Amazon list. And I don't know if Tom <laughs> took that as him, like as her saying like, I, I kind of want this. He sent her yes. blue Yeti microphone. And that's, you know, that's just the type of guy, you know, Tom Fulp is like, he wants to help people get to the next level. That's why he's, he's such a great guy. I love him. <laughs> but how do you really feel about him? Do you think he's good or like so, so I said, I love him. Well, There's no denying <laughs> it, <laughs> but how do you really feel? I'm, you know, <laughs> I yeah, no, love that guy him. Solid. <laughs> If you say so. And just so you guys know, there's still I think they're still accepting applications. So if, if so for any animators or illustrators out there, if you want to uh submit uh you know, submit an application, explain why you need uh the tablet and what you're hoping to achieve with the new tablet, send in some examples of your work and, mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And you know, hopefully Tom picks you out of the out of the crowd of people who are, you know, submitting. And yeah. It, it it's a great opportunity to invest in yourself and, and, and just show how great of an animator or illustrator that you are. You know, there, there's a yeah. reason why you're here and you want to get better. And this is an opportunity to help yourself get better. And I don't know if you need to hear this, but if you feel like it might be something that would help you out, don't psych yourself out by saying, oh, I shouldn't be signing up for this because somebody else might need it more than me. Or I would feel bad if I got it because I would take it away from somebody else who might need it more or you know don't like you don't have to put yourself up on a a, up against other people like that just if you feel like it would help you and if you feel like it would be something useful throw your hat in the ring and like let them be the judge of whether you deserve it or not because if you do deserve it but you're gonna i'm just i'm saying this assuming somebody might feel this way because i know i would probably feel this way if i had a bad tablet but i was like at least i have a tablet somebody might not you know somebody might I have nothing at all. And then what am I, who am I to get the tablet instead of them? It's not a means of being greedy. It's, you know, like I've told a bunch of other voice actors, you know, that if this is what you want to do for a career and for a living, you have to invest in yourself. And it's not like putting yourself ahead of others. Uh, you know, it, it's just trying to give yourself that opportunity to succeed and, and shine in what you ultimately want to do. And, you mm-hmm. know, if you get that opportunity to get a tablet, you know, you can also donate to, yeah. you know, donate in some sort of way, giving back uh, to the to the giveaway, because I, I know some people have done that. And I think mm-hmm. um, uh, like which our guests are going to they did for their prize money for uh, best of December. Um, mm-hmm. They took the winnings for the best of December and they put it towards the tablet giveaway. I think that's what I think that's what they did, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. So if if, if you're one of those people who feels like I really don't deserve this because I don't want to take away from other people, you can easily give back to the community in some way by donating to the, the giveaway or just donating to Newgrounds in general, you know. And if you like the idea of people giving away the tablets, then donate a little bit to Newgrounds. Uh, Tom mentioned in a post, if you say, if you donate to Newgrounds and you say that you're going to put that directly into the tablet giveaway, that's exactly what happens with it. And that can propose, that can uh, propel more giveaways down the line. He basically said that, like, I, I think he was addressing a question of how many are you going to do? And he said, like, I, I mean, as long as the money's there, it's going to come. Yeah. <laughs> like, it could be indefinite. We could just give a tablet away every day. How awesome would that be? That, yeah. that that would be one of the coolest things that I think Newgrounds would ever do is just giving away a tablet every day and making sure that, you know, every animator or illustrator that uses Newgrounds is set up for, you know, for success. That would be really damn yeah. cool. I, w- I wouldn't be opposed to that. And and branch it out to discipline, uh, like, like you said, a Yeti, like you could do a tablet or you could do a, a Yeti or a Snowball if they're an audio person. 
Uh, you could do a, oh, I put myself in a hole here because I'm trying to think of examples for everything. <laughs> if you're a writing person, he'll give you like a pen. <laughs> he'll give you a pen. A $1 50 pens. Pen. <laughs> I'm, a writing, I'm a writer on Newgrounds and I have only been writing on a computer and I need to hand write my things. And so please give me 50 pens. And <laughs> Which is good for a lifetime, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. No, you did. Uh, you mentioned something earlier, which is that like our, our guest. So who we talked to for this episode uh, to play a little clip today is uh, Brandy Weasel and uh, Gio Corelli, George Corellic, who did the Tankmas, or as I was erroneously calling it, the uh, Newgrounds Adventure 2020. And they gave the money that they got from winning the Games of the Month thing back into the drawing tablet contest. And that kind of raises an interesting point, and they kind of talked about this too, which is if you win something because it's original content on Newgrounds, they always do money prize for the biggest original content thing. But if you do Newgrounds content, does it technically count as original or is it Newgrounds thing? Does having Newgrounds content in your thing give you an edge? Is it, what do you think about that? I kind of, that was an interesting little thing. Oh, that... Shoot, you're you're kind of asking existential questions right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I am. I love doing that. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. Like, if you're creating your own original work and you're posting it on Newgrounds, it's kind of like it's two in, it's two in the same. You're, you're creating material that's for Newgrounds, but at the same time, it's an original character that gets to be highlighted on Newgrounds and grow within that community. So, I. I feel it's kind of kind of like a combination of both and it's a win win in my and like for me it's a win win, you know? Yeah, I guess I would say it should be fine. I mean, it's not like I think a lot of the reason they reward the original content is A to promote original content, but also to make sure that they're not giving too much undue attention to something that might have a legal issue down the line or something like that. Like if oh, yeah, you I put guess, a Nintendo parody and it gets a little I mean, not that you wouldn't support something that somebody wanted to do, even if it is a Nintendo parody, but maybe it's just that you want to uh, make sure you're not giving money. And then you that, I don't know, that project now becomes commercial because you give it money and then it's troubling and whatever. I don't know. All I'm trying to say is <laughs> <laughs> I went down my own, uh, whatever, not my own butt right now. But <laughs> it, just to say, if you do a Newgrounds content thing, Newgrounds isn't going to sue you and give you an award at the same time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they won't. <laughs> We give you an award for $250, but we're also suing you for $250. So no, please. <laughs> I'll keep this. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Quickly, uh, hey, Gio Corelli, is that legit what you just posted in the chat? Because I want to talk about it real quick if, you, if it is, because that's cool. Okay, Gio Corelli just posted this in our chat and pointed this out. I hadn't known this before, but um, asked David Capello, who is the uh, guy that has a Sprite, which is a really popular pixel tool. Said he's looking to donate five copies of Ace Bright, either as prizes or part of a giveaway for Newgrounds, saying, what's the best way to go about this? Like, do I do a bulk donation? And David Capello reached back and said, oh, I'll offer the five keys to giveaway. Boom, done. And he offered the contact. That's so, awesome. Speaking of very generous, awesome online creators, there's David Capello, creator of Ace Bright, wanting people to succeed. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, George, for <laughs> showing us that, too. Hell yeah, George. Yeah. You're a good man. Good man. He also bought lots of tickets for the uh, thing. And we're going to be hearing from him very soon. So, yeah, we talked about Tankmas. Uh, I had an amazing time with the Advent this year. I didn't do every day. I wish I had looking back. But I wasn't prepared for how deep it was going to be and how much of a community experience it was going to be. I literally thought it would be something where I, I, I click a button and <laughs> something, you know, I, I see art every day. But what they created was this big, deep, multiplayer experience where you and everybody around you were going around and picking up presents, but also playing games, listening to music, Newgrounds music. They, they pulled that off a stop for this. Don't you think? Absolutely. Like this tank miss or th this advent calendar was easily one of my favorites. And, and I told them in, in our interview, I think one of the coolest parts of it, aside from and all of the cool uh, illustrations and, and all of the great music that was put together and, and the few animations that were put together, it was seeing everybody being able to come on and playing on a multiplayer status. Like that, that was really cool. Cause I remember like there was times where I was on and I'm, and I'm seeing, like, I think there was one time where I was on with George 
And I'm like, hey, like I'm playing with the guy who actually put the you know the collab together. <laughs> so this is it, it was cool. Like this you, is you your thing. Got to, yeah. You got to enjoy everything together with fellow new grabbers, and you know, I, I enjoyed that personally because you also got to see how many people wanted to play the game on a daily basis. So it, it was it was awesome. It it was a step in the right yeah. direction. Like I'm I'm glad that they incorporated the the multiplayer to it. Yeah. And I mean, like I'll, I'll talk about this in the segment you're about to hear, but I was going into talking with them thinking it was just going to be like we were like when we've talked to a teams doing a, a collab or doing like a little uh, game jam project where they're like, yeah, we wanted to do it. And so we did. Yeah. And it was fun and things were hard, but overall it was good. <laughs> but this ended up being a lot deeper. They had a lot more reasoning for doing it. They got a lot more out of it. They put a lot more into it than I had imagined. And so that's part of what makes this a really cool talk. So um, you ready for me to go ahead and launch into this thing? Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do it. Yeah. And by the way, you, y'all know if you've heard this kind of thing happen before, but I like to put music behind the pre-recorded segments. All the music, as you might notice, is going to be from the Newgrounds uh, advent itself. This is from the Tankmas game, which had killer music. So I was really easy. It was really easy for me to put that in there. So yeah, without further ado, this is us talking to uh, Brandy and Gio about the NG Advent. So I heard you guys made something interesting called the Newgrounds Advent Chur Calendar 2020. <laughs> 2020. It's funny because that's what we call it. Yeah, that's what we yeah. call it, but um, it's not called that. It's never been called that. It's the Christmas adventure, which this year we decided to make um, a, a, a new holiday, Tankmas, because George uh, George wanted to be more inclusive this year. And, you know, it was a little bit inspired by the McElroy brothers, and they're, uh, they're made up holiday for the winter times. Big yeah. fan, big candle night celebrator over here in this household, too. Um, I just want to say I love Christmas. Like, I didn't want to exclude Christmas in any way, but... Uh... Yeah, I just thought, like, making up a holiday would be fun. Yeah, and plus we wanted to go a little bit further than Christmas this year, and Advent usually ends on Christmas, and we're like, no, let's let's do all December. And it's, all right, well, you know, you can't really call it the same thing and expect people to get that. Like, if we just called it Christmas, people would expect it to end, and you know what, people still expected it to end on the 25th, and we had to remind people. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's um, the thing. You know, a lot of people love to continue celebrating the Christmas season even after Christmas is done. You know, a lot of people consider the whole Christmas season to run until the end of December. So following the same suit with Take Minutes was a really good idea and it allowed more creators to, you know, post some of their own original work, you know, through the remainder of the year. So that was that was a really good idea on your part, guys. Yeah. And it, it means we can include more people. And I feel like everybody thought that the biggest day of the year for 2020 was going to be the end of it. So I felt like there was a good reason to celebrate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, one thing that we never got around to, and I don't know if me or George ever officially wanted that to be a part of the game. I, I mean, we definitely joked about it, but there was supposed to be a pissing on 2020 mini game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what that was down south, the WIP snowy area. Yeah, like I remember after we released uh, Twas the Night before Tank Miss, um, I forget who I was talking about it in the Advent uh, calendar chat. Someone said, oh, yeah, I'm going to make a piss on 2020 calendar game. And like, uh, never mind. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's been a suggestion that's been bouncing since like early November. Maybe next year. We'll, we'll yeah, still piss on twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is yeah. twenty twenty part two as we've seen so far. So let's just piss on it some more. Super twenty twenty turbo edition. Actually, you know what? It's it's twenty nineteen version three. <laughs> Dude, twenty nineteen was a special year for Advent. That one was really fun. So speaking of that, um, like you guys, uh, Brandy, you originated the Advent calendar in uh 2018 uh like when you put it together were you planning to continue this game like as a yearly tradition or was it more so like let's see if it's successful and you know go on from there well it's not about like being a success so the thing is like cam or ninja muffin uh he wanted to bring back the advent calendar which was just a thing that turkey on a stick did a really long time ago and uh lewis 
2012. Uh, like David, 2012, like, sketchbooks. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they had these, all these really cool art collabs, and Advent was one that Turkey on Stick did, and he wanted to revive it, so he tried making the game, and then he had these really shit art assets, like he always does, and uh, back <laughs> then, whenever he would have, like, these bullshit assets, like, he would share the games uh, in our private Discord server, and then I'd be like, oh, man, I, I'll whip something up real quick, and I ended up redoing all the sprites in the game in time for day one. And then we just started uh, working on the thing together and he slowly brought me into the project and I was like, oh, cool. And it, it felt really cool to do as like, you know, co-creators on it. And I don't think either of us plan to do it again for the next year. But then George decided to revive the project uh, because he was feeling really charitable because it was, I, I don't know if the entire year, but like George was going through a bit of a rough time. And then he was like, well, I want to give back and, you know, spread a little joy and happiness. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's a good little transition into the next question. You know, George, with you uh, joining the collab in in 2019, like what made you want to initially join? Like, elaborate on that more. And like, what were some of the ideas you wanted to bring to the table to set the bar uh, from the previous year? Um, well, so right before Thanksgiving, my my mom passed away, um, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I, I don't I don't really know how to explain it, but I just felt like the best thing to do is just trying to like give something to people. And That's awesome. Yeah, I, I don't. It, it sounds kind of bullshit, but yeah. No, it's, um, it's actually quite beautiful, man. It is. Yeah, and it's also like it, it's not just a positive thing, but it's also a little bit of you know a positive distraction in life. Uh, per personally, like my 2020 has been pretty crap, and I feel like a lot of people's have too. Um, mm -hmm. But like when Advent came around, I was like, this is something I'm really looking forward to being a part of because it's a whole lot of fun and it's so great to see everybody's reactions. I feel like, um, you know, when stuff's negative and you want to put positive out in the world, it's also because you want to put that positive out for yourself. Yeah, very, very true. And like, especially in, in George's situation, you know, you're also relying on a community to, you know, you, you were bringing some positivity to the Newgrounds community and in turn, they gave you some more positivity and, I, and I'm sure but it helped you through that, you know, that time period of, of losing your mom, which, you know, sorry for that, man. Like that's, Thanks. that's, that's never an easy thing. <laughs> for sure. Um, but I think that is the connection because I think it was, what are they called? Not a funeral, but like a, like a wake. Yeah. When uh, people mm -hmm. were just lining up outside the door, like way more people than I ever thought would come to a, a wake. And yeah. um, it made me think about like connections in life and kind of somehow turned it into a Newgrounds thing. Um, Cause that's, <laughs> an old ass community that I have always been a part of. Wow. You know, this would have been like great and fine if it was just talking about a, a game that y'all made because y'all were bored and wanted to do something and bullshit and have fun jokes. But this has gone in such a positive kind of be the light you want to see in the world direction. I'm so proud of you guys and Newgrounds. Jesus. Yeah. That's this kind of how we, what we've channeled into the project is just <laughs> spread the shit, spread the joy. And for us yeah. to talk about this and using projects and creativity to deal with grief and a mini game based around pissing in the snow at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, pinning a tail on Nick Conter's butt, you know, yeah. that's a great game. Pinning too. a tail on his, on his like very rendered butthole. That was a pretty good <laughs> mini game. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when, when it comes to making this game, though, th there is some negative emotions you can associate, which is like the tiredness. George and I each have probably pulled about a dozen or at least a week's worth of all-nighters just on different aspects of the game uh, on random nights, depending on whatever content we were trying to push out. Even some nights before December. Well, yeah. shoot, I, think I, I remember for for the Grinch cartoon, uh, Brandy was up super... He literally told us, you know, I've been up for 24 hours working on my part of this animation so we can get it out for the, you know, for the advent calendar. Yeah, and that was unfortunate. It was, but it also led up to some some positive buildup. You had people, at maybe at one point, like fifty people, all waiting by the theater door, just trying to get in to see, just trying to see early content uh, in the theater. So people got to see mm -hmm. an early uh, or a work in a work in progress Among Us cartoon that you were putting together instead <laughs> for those who snuck into the theater. So that was a Kind of like a cool little Easter egg, if you want to call it that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would definitely call it Easter egg because it was accidental. Yeah. yeah, no, making that animation was really, really stressful because I was sitting at my desk in a lot of pain. I had been dealing with like this ear infection for a week that I just suddenly oh. got. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, swimmer's ear. Apparently, no joke, because I swear it's like the second worst pain I've ever been in my entire life. Oh my God. So, 
Yeah. I mean, with Advent, I got ahead of my work. I was like, finally, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm ahead of schedule. George has all the stuff he needs for these events. I just need to work on this animation now. I reserved four days aside. I was out of commission those four days, and I had to start working on Advent and it at the same time. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't great, but I'm so glad I got it done. I just wish I got it done on time for everybody. But, but you know, it also, it just shows the effort that you two put into making this game a success. And, you know, that leads into the next question. It's for both of you guys. Uh, with 18 and 19 being very successful on Newgrounds, I'm sure the bar was set very high for, you know, the 2020 iteration. So, like, what goals did you guys set for yourself to surpass that bar? Hmm. I feel like a lot of our goals we fell short of, honestly. Yeah. I mean, we were like, have, what? Like, I'm curious now. Like, what kind of stuff would have been in the Animated gun? avatars and, like, custom DJ booths and a whole bunch of stuff. I feel like compared to what we imagined this year was going to be, like, it's kind of hard to really, like, look back super positively on, on it. I am yeah. you know, <laughs> really proud of a lot of things that we did. Actually, I think Brandy had more of the... Uh, ideas that came to fl uh, fruition um, yeah we're, well a lot of mine uh, became simpler over time because i like i tampered my expectations down uh but uh, just imagine what advent we ended up with it was 800 times that and then this is still more impressive than the previous years but we wanted to do so much more i, I think just including like games and, and comics and different like disciplines of, of creators made it extra yeah. special in the end yeah for sure. I'm glad we finally got around to the mini games. Like, for example, it, fun fact, in the first, very first 2018 advent, uh, we were supposed to have a mini game, which was the holiday hominid drop. Uh, those sprites were actually made in 2018, and Cam and I were working on that. And oh, then wow. we just ended up Dang. never making it. So I brought it back this year, and thanks to Nose Doge, we pumped it out, and th that game's finally, like, out there. It's not a complex game, but it felt good to, like, go back into the archive and finish that one up. For a lot of the the characters that you can choose from, personally, which which ones were your favorite? Hmm. I like me. <laughs> you can play as me. <laughs> that is a really well done character. Fair. Like, I mean, that's actually a character that's been in the game since the first advent because in the background as the month progresses, you can see uh, that version of me and Cameron physically building a cabin in the background that we then used for 2019. Oh, what? that's cool. Holy Holy and then Marvel he's, Cinematic uh, Universe, Batman. Yeah, and then exactly. he's also the murderer. In the Friday the 13th event, he's also the murderer that you find outside, uh, that you stab. Uh, you to, guys to are that weaving that a day. tapestry here for us. I was going to say, <laughs> holy cow. This is like Pixar, where like a, the movie before Finding Nemo has a clownfish in it, and it's like, oh, yeah. that's going to make some <laughs> kind of sense in four years. You well, know it's, it's been weird. We've added a lot of lore. Yeah, guys, keep playing Advent and look for the, the Easter eggs and see what we're going to come out with next. Yes. Yeah, like if uh, in, in the first year, actually, there was this whole like treasure hunt that uh, Logan Fresh and Ninja Muffin put into the advent that like not a lot of people did, but it added a bunch of lore to the surrounding area and the event. And it was about like the Tumblr purge and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we have a bunch of Easter eggs, like, for example, on Christmas Eve, if you look at it at night, you could see Santa fly across the moon. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but then there's, yeah, the Gyarados, so canonically, uh, the 2018 advent, that lake is actually the Lake of Rage. In, oh, uh, no way. Yeah, <laughs> that's the reason that there's a Gyarados there. there. It's the Red Gyarados. <laughs> 2020, you can visit the 2019 cabin because the mansion is built on top of it. Yeah, if you go outside and go to the cellar door, you can go um, to the old advent. Yeah, they all just take place in the same area. So one of our plans when we were first like coming up with 2020 is, well, we ended 2019 uh, with everyone dying in a fire and you go up to heaven. <laughs> and we're like, do we have to, we were trying to figure out a way to start in heaven this year. And then we just ended up dropping that because we were like, we don't have to like tie it that closely together with previous yeah. years. That's just so limiting. <laughs> That's a little metaphysical. <laughs> I still wanted to, too. Yeah, we, we did have a fun idea with like different artists designing different floors of the advent and like you could descend down these levels and like view the world art being created by different people that uh, started to conflict when we decided we wanted to um, incorporate custom skins or like different skins reflecting different characters. I mean, there's other ideas that we have that I think that we would, might want to visit in the future, but... I, then again, I don't know if either of us would work on Advent again. I mean, it's really fun, but it's so time-consuming. 
And, yeah. you know, after mm-hmm. a certain time, it's like you have to go the way of the dodo or the ninja muffin and just, like, hand it <laughs> off. And be deleted. <laughs> That's true. I mean, at, but at the end of all this, I, I hope that you guys don't see this as, uh, like, what could have been and something that would have been good. I mean, y'all came out with something truly great. I really hope you know that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, the moment George showed me that multiplayer was working, I was like, you have brought all of my dreams for this year to fruition. I mean, we, we had more stuff, but I was like, this 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 makes it for me. And that and that's a, a good point to bring up. Was this the first time that you guys have had multiplayer on the advent calendar? Yeah. yeah. If, if it's something that you guys have never done before, like what did you have to do to make this a reality? So luckily, um, the multiplayer is like pretty easy because no one can like affect each other. Oh, so good. it was like probably a oh, lot yeah. easier than most multiplayer games you're like ghosts you're all ghosts kind of phasing through each other and doing your things like it's like if you played call of duty and you could just see each other right yeah (laughs) just shoot each other but not do anything (laughs) yeah so it's very surface level um Mm -hmm. shout out to austin east he did bass master online for the hex pixel jam i basically stole his code and repurposed it (laughs) for what we want to do honestly to me that was the best aspect of the game because you log on, you know, you go and get your presents, you check out the art, and then next thing you know, you could potentially see Tom Fulp walking right beside you playing this game. Like, well, hey, that's really yeah. cool. I, I completely agree. Like, you know, the Christmas morning feeling of every watching people around you open presents and be Rest happy. To it. Yeah. You got that for a, a month straight. I got day. that every day with 1,000 meeps. He kept racing me for the, the first to unlock the present medal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I I loved it. I mean, the multiplayer was magical. Freaking the first night, I knew it, everything was gonna be so cool the entire month because Sir Palo just came on and I saw him dancing around as the little spooky month boys. And I was like, yeah, that's so <laughs> oh, cool. that's adorable. It's it's really cool seeing like people you look up to playing your game in real time. What were some of your favorite submissions uh, from the game this year? Oh, um, I think my favorite's definitely the. Night before tank miss. Oh, like everything, everything about that. Just That's a lot of people's favorite. Yeah. Oh well, thank you guys. <laughs> Yo, major you, props you to Mr. Schmooz though, because the artwork for that literally took it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, we loved it so much that that's why the credit hallway is all just portraits drawn by Mr. Schmooz. Yeah, as far as favorites, um, I think I really like Carlston Choose. That that's like a pixel art submission that we got that we got to see progress from like the first pixel the whole time. Cause oh, yeah. I, I, oh. I just like it because we got to see them post a work in progress like every single day. I yeah. really like Dying Sun submission. Uh, Sevi has a really freaking cool one. Simbarine especially because she, she always just likes takes day one cause she's the most reliable freaking person we ever have when it comes to the collab. <laughs> she just yeah. shows up and she's like, yep, it's done on time. Here you go. I'm like, That's right. awesome. Good we probably me. wouldn't like, we would get off to such a bad note if if Simbarine didn't like start every year every single day had great content and it, it didn't let anybody down you know the expectations were there right and it right. seemed that everybody who played at this you know through the month of December enjoyed every single piece of content that was released every single day yeah I never saw a lack of anything instead all I saw was a plethora of amazing just ideas thrown at the wall and they were all fun I had fun with the music the little instruments you could play <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was just trying to run, trying to blow my flute at everybody. Just trying to see if they were doing it. <laughs> no. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to be able to like play music at other people. That that was like the most requested feature I think we got. But, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember there was some other nights. ideas I had. I wanted like it wouldn't be like networked music because that would just be annoying as fuck. But like some games involving playing music and then sending the music out for other people. Oh, interesting. Uh, like a uh, oh. Like a telephone game cool. where you get some, you record a little bit of music with your little indie game music, and then it becomes a file. Somebody plays over that, and it, it kind of stacks exactly. and stacks. Interesting. And, and I still think that's a thing that like can happen, but I don't know if I'm gonna have to wait till 2021 to do that. But at least my favorite part this year was just like seeing people flock to the arcade and like seeing a bunch of virtual people around virtual cabinets. Yeah. Yeah. The the movie. Like seeing oh the movie theater everybody yeah. flocked to that movie it was pretty crazy. Everybody the, waiting outside and then the doors wouldn't open because they had to refresh the page, but nobody knew that. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people thought we like 
did the 6.30 release time, like, just to, like, build suspense. But really, we were just, like, like, everything is, like, in as soon as it's done, basically. <laughs> yeah. And we're not, like, we're not buying time or anything. We're just... Like the, <laughs> the Duncan and Jones. That's when it's done. <laughs> George George made sure everything was ready for the Duncan Jones. And he's like, all right, y'all good? And I was like, yep, all set. And then he left. And then everything was not okay. And I had to, like, figure out <laughs> oh, some no. bugs. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, this isn't working. And I was like panic typing George and then I figured it out on my own. <laughs> I was like, nice. Really yeah. glad that you figured it out on your own. I love the idea of the public Newgrounds release party where everybody watches it at the same time, much less yeah. in a in a fictional like metaverse game. It's like Newgrounds Second Life. And I think that's another reason why um, it was so good because this year particularly, like everyone was isolated. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. think just having everyone together, even in a virtual space, was like a really refreshing change. change. Yeah. Despite After all the ideas anything. that we had, d- despite all the ideas we had, especially with like the different floors and all that, I think multiplayer was just the perfect thing we could have done in 2020. If there's anything 2020 did that was good, it made everybody realize how important online communities can be, right? Absolutely. Yeah, like in a year where, you know, being separated was the big thing, you know, the online community is... You know, it kept everybody together. And mm-hmm. and like I said, the multiplayer was an opportunity for Newgrounds to be together throughout the month of December and play with friends and, you know, still be there for one another. So, yeah, yeah. It, easily a highlight of the game. Now, you guys mentioned you were thinking about not doing it next year. What, what do you think about that? Is that just a workload thing? And if you were going to pass the buck, is there anybody you would pass the buck to? Well, I mean... I felt exactly the same way a year ago. I don't know if I'll do it again next year um, just because of how much work it is or it's like maybe it should be passed on to somebody else, but uh, I guess I'd have to see how I feel in the future. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be really cool if somebody just took it upon themselves, honestly. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming on to NGP and talking about the Tank Miss Adventure. And uh, you heard it here, folks. Somebody take the reins. If these guys want to pass it down, they're There's willing to. There's an open to. seat. <laughs> <laughs> There's an open seat, folks. Come on, get on that thing. If you're interested, reach out. We have George here. Tell him. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he's in the check. Just tell him you're going to. Although, I think they're going to do it. I think I, I this is a cut. I kind of said this to him on the day and I didn't include it, but I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to start to get like, oh, man, remember when we did that awesome project? I think they're going to come time next year. Be like, I missed you. I missed you, too. <laughs> Let's do it again. Oh, big hug. And then the game gets made all over again. And then they're so tired again. <laughs> I agree with you. All. I think they'll do it again. And honestly, if somebody does take the reins, I, like we did mention it, I think it'll be one of those instances where it's being done and they're like no 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 you're you're doing it wrong let me take over (laughs) exactly oh yeah 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 yeah. it's like no you can do it just oh don't do it that way though um but you can do it but oh no what are you doing (laughs) let the pros do it (laughs) (laughs) and also like it was nice to hear how much value you got out of doing your bit which was the night before tankmas too which is a great project i i i loved putting that together like when uh george initially just brought me on to be a writer for it and i asked him like so it's like what what do you want me to write he goes quite honestly Corey, i I don't know (laughs) so i was like well maybe (laughs) i can you know just help out with writing any you know stories or like the daily notes or something like that so maybe i could put a poem together and maybe do like a audio thing he goes that's a possibility so you know we we threw the i threw the idea out there of like doing a parody of you know towards the night before christmas and just make it a you know new grounds theme and uh, they said yes like george and and brandy were like dude that sounds great yeah do that so um it, i recorded it up and i was very fortunate to get connor grail to hop on in and do the music i initially was going to have albie do the music but he had to back out because he had too much. He had too many other projects mm. they had to work on. But Connor swooped in. He goes, "Dude, I'll help you out." He goes, "I have. I already have an idea of what we can do." I'm like, "That's brilliant." And then I guess Doggle reached out to George too and said, "Hey, I'm interested in doing some voices. If you know, if 
you, you want to do that. So I reached out to Doggle and I said, Hey man, I'm doing an audio submission. Do you want to help out? He goes, absolutely. So he helped me out with the background <laughs> voices and like all, all the, like all the little voices that you hear in the background, that's Doggle. And that just shows you how talented that guy is like major props to him. Right. And a million voices. And it, it everything just came together so well like the music gave it a different atmosphere and having doggo in the background you know playing all these different characters it, it created more personality like it it brought the scene to like, inside your head like you can actually see the guys drinking and cheersing and beating the crap out of each other and then <laughs> being being mad when you know tom's pointing at the broken servers <laughs> Right. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was a complete surprise to me that Schmoods was actually putting comic slides together for it. You know, he reached out to me on the Newground server and he said, hey, man, um, I actually have the slides ready to go. Do you want to take a look? I'm like, what slides? Slides. He, he sends. Wait, them. you didn't think there was going to be any visual at all? No, I, I thought it was just going to be like <laughs> a, just a, a pod, like a, a narrative podcast type thing. Yeah, like I because I, I thought they, they were going to just put a little image up on the you know, in the theater or just up on the screen and just let the audio play. So when Schmoods hit me up, I'm like, dude, this is absolutely fantastic. The, the imagery just made it even more realistic and it, mm -hmm. it allowed you to connect more with the story. And like, there was a lot of really cool stuff, but that to me in general, just, it, it is my, it is my personal favorite and not just because it's something I worked on, but just all the additional stuff that was put into it by Schmoods, yeah. Connor and Doggle you know, it brought it to life and it actually meant a lot to me because there's three people right there from the Newgrounds community who wanted to make this something, but more than just an, an audio submission. So it, it was really fun. And, you know, for those who are listening right now, like I, I do have a new icon image and that was done by Mr. Smoots. I was so impressed by his work. I hit him up and I said, dude, I love what you did. Can you do a, you know, a new logo for me? And he goes, absolutely. So, you know, just like in turn, I was so impressed. I wanted to give him an opportunity to, you know, I, I was so impressed. I wanted yeah. him to do something for me. And, you know, it, it's it, it, a lot of good stuff. You know, it's, it's what you want to see from new grounds, people helping out each other and putting the best stuff yeah. out there. It was really cool. The best kind of art is multidisciplinary art. I will stand by that any day. I, I mean, not the best kind of art, whatever, but like there is beauty in multidisciplinary people of different kinds of art getting together and making something bigger. And that's what that was. I mean, there is a, a lot of genius and a lot of different capacities coming together to make something like that. It was really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, I think that that's a good little transition into something else that's that's awesome. If, if you guys have been paying attention, and if you are a follower and a fan of Meat Canyons, yeah. Hunter has recently released the first episode of his original series called Monster Lab. And my God, it is everything that you expect from Meat Canyon, <laughs> and it was hilarious, and I loved it, and I cannot wait to see episode two. It is great. Yeah, I was expecting to be blown away by animation, but I wasn't expecting to be sucked in. I saw it too, and I was like, oh, I'm ready for more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the story yeah. is actually not so bad. I mean, it's absurd. Of course it's absurd, <laughs> but, like, I, you, the, you see the characters, and one of them's a, like a turquoise potato, and one of them is like a slime monster mike wazowski type or the monsters versus aliens guy played by seth rogan but anyway <laughs> true yeah and they like <laughs> and they uh but and you're like okay whatever they're weird but that you actually connect with them by the end of it i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting the show to be so legit i guess which i hope I, that comes out well <laughs> <laughs> well one of the things that i loved about it is the fact that the main characters are monsters, mm -hmm. but they never really distinguish the fact that they're monsters and like stuff, especially the stuff inside their house. Yeah. A bunch of different creatures and everything <laughs> is basically alive. Yes. I but love the Flintstones me, aspect of it where everything is yeah. just a person. <laughs> like they're sitting on a person watching a TV. That's also a person. And there's the ceilings a person. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And what a great way to just have a bunch of cameo roles too. Cause you know, everybody, you know, is going to be playing like, the ceiling fan or some shit like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I know for his Kickstarter, he had a tier. If you paid a thousand dollars, you can be a voice actor in one of them. And I'm like, I'm like, I wish I had a thousand dollars. I could just throw away right now. Cause I would love to be in that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I I'm just excited to see the success of his series and, you know, it would be awesome for him to get picked up, you mm -hmm. know, cause there's, that would be another Newgrounds animator 
who is off and running and being successful in what they do. Like we're seeing that right now with uh, Psychic Pebbles. Yep. With Smiling Friends, and the I don't know if it's been announced yet if Adult Swim picked it up, but my God, the pilot was so hilarious, and you just want Zach to get that opportunity because he has worked hard and he's a great animator. He's hilarious, mm -hmm. and you want to see a fellow new grounder succeed. So it, it, it ties into what Hunter's doing. You want him to succeed with Monster Lab, and you want to see a lot of episodes and just you know, yeah, blow up. Yeah, yeah like it. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It's it's on YouTube. It's on Newgrounds, and it is hilarious and extremely well done it certainly is good for him <laughs> it's good stuff the community is blowing up right now too so there's a lot going on uh, uh oh and by the way before we get off of the um the brandy and geo talking about the tank miss there was a little bit yeah. more of that and i just saved a little extra bit i'm gonna throw it in a at the end of this so like at, after the little closing music you're going to hear it. It's just funny. It's just a little bonus clip. But instead of <laughs> putting it separately as its own thing, I figured, let's just put it at the end. Why not? You listen to the end? Reward. <laughs> <laughs> Random nonsense. It got cut. So, yeah, there's that. But, um, God, there's a lot of stuff going on. First of all, contests out the wazoo. Uh, Seven Seas has a Valentine's Day writing contest, which is going to be fun. It's um, <laughs> I like the concept of this. It's called... Uh, it's called Any Other Era. So Seven Seas was so <laughs> upset with 2020, understandably, that she needs you to write something at least 50 years before 2020 or 50 years after. You can't, within a 100-mile diameter of 2020, can't approach that. So you got to be talking about 1970 or 2070 or before or after. Don't even talk about anything close to 2020. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you do you're disqualified immediately <laughs> yeah no but literally it's like even if you're that close to 2020 it's not gonna be considered because that's the thing uh, it needs to be romance some hot steamy romance is gonna be appreciated <laughs> by me and, um, it, and it can be and it can be a story about anything it, it can be comedic it can be adventurous it can be a horror mm -hmm. it like your your ending can be a tragic ending but as long as there's that romantic aspect in there it's free game yep and uh Seven Seas put one final little uh, carrot at the end of the stick, which is that she wants you to make her feel something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> she says, she says, I'm 100% dead inside. Whoever can make me feel something wins $100. <laughs> that's too, that's the feels are real in this one. <laughs> and what I love about it is a fan favorite, Gory Blizzard, is a judge as well. <laughs> of course he's a judge. Of course he's a freaking judge. He's. You can't escape the guy. <laughs> you you can't. You really can't. I feel like as long as you include some fecal matter in your story, you'll get some good points from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you uh, make seven C's feel something and include poop at the same time, you might just take the whole thing home. So with that, <laughs> good luck to all you writers out there. It needs to be past future poop related and uh, make her feel something. Get on it. Oh, there's a $175 pot. She put this up out of her own wallet. $100 to first place, $50 to second place, $25 to third place. Uh, and the, the, there's the 100%. There's $100 if you make her feel something, which I'm guessing she's expecting not to be given out. But, hey, you know, she's putting her own money on the line here. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, if you are a writer, you know, definitely, you know, get your pen working and see what you can come up with. And if you're looking to be a writer and you want that little nudge to you know encourage you to take that leap try your hand see what happens and see where you where you place in you know in the contest you know i i know for the voice acting contest uh that was held in october uh, a lot of people tried it out tried out voice acting for the first time and it they really loved it and it, and it encouraged them to you know try their hand at voice acting even more so if you're looking to be a writer and you want to try your hand, definitely do it. Yeah. And and I guess that ties into our uh, our next contest that's that's coming up here. And I think it'd be best if we brought on our friend uh, Zin Zinx because he is hosting it. Uh, Zin, can you tell us a little bit about the contest that you're doing? I don't know if Zin was part of this today. Is he uh, hey guys. Oh, <laughs> how you doing? Zin. Hey Zin, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I, I, I'm good, man. Um, 
you know, th- thanks for bringing me on. I'm going to talk about my, my contest here real quick. It's a art contest. Hi, Zin. It's good to talk to you today. Hi, Will. I miss you, man. How are you, man? I miss you, too. Uh, I'm good. You know, your voice always makes me feel happy and loved. And and, and that's it's great for, for the contest. It's a art contest. And uh-huh. it's uh, the concept of love art contest, man. And, and it's great. You know, uh, right. I, what I want you guys to do is I, I want you to put some art together that, you know, that defines what what, what is love to you. Like, what what does love feel like? And, and, and like, what what is love to you? You know, uh, it's it's a great opportunity <laughs> to test your hand <laughs> at, at drawing. And, how and long can you do this? Don't be showing how great of an artist you are. <laughs> I can't keep it together. <laughs> yeah, you, you, a, a sentence works. A paragraph might slip. Uh, <laughs> Zen Zenix, I am so yeah. impressed with you that not only are you doing that, you are doing a whopping two contests at once right now. You got the concept of love contest where uh, you do art based on what you think the concept of love is to you. And for a little more salacious side of things, you have the sexiest outfit contest yeah, too, man. where you just draw an OC in a sexy outfit. Uh, yeah. Zen, what is it with you and OCs and sexy outfits and like boobs and stuff? It's like, what's, you love that stuff. I, don't I, you? Mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why everyone labels me as like the not safe for work guy, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's just great. I, I love, you know, people just being creative and, you know, just, you know, creating their own OCs, you know, it's, it, it's great. It, it just shows off your creative sign and, and it allows you, to show your your OCs in a new light, so it, it's it's really great. You know, it. I, I just want to see everyone in the new grounds community to to just you know showcase how how great and creative they are. You know, so give you give everybody two opportunities to you know be creative and and be amazing because you know I I you know how much I love art. Well, I, I love it. Uh, you know, you know, I know you do. Is Corey there? By the way, yeah, man, I'm still here. Yeah, could you tickle Zen real quick and make him laugh? I just like to hear his laugh. He has a fun laugh. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey come here, Zen. <laughs> Sorry, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm really ticklish. Don't do that. Sorry. Sorry, man. I, I won't do that to you, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus, this is the stupidest thing I've ever... I love it. <laughs> um, Yeah. Cash prize, man. The uh, sexiest outfit. First place, $230. Second place, $120. It all goes down from there. A user Moosh donated sixty dollars to that, and to the concept of love one, you get three hundred dollars first place, one hundred and sixty dollars second place. There is money being passed around with these contests. I Lots of money. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All the contests. I love it. Thank you, Zen, for showing up today. I'm glad that you were here, even though you told me earlier you were driving. Well, I, I, that's that's the thing about me. Well, I'm I'm multi talented, man. I, I I can do a lot of things at once. It, I'm full of surprises. Oh man! All right, <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for joining us, in. Hey, no problem, Corey. I love you, man. I love you too, buddy. I love you, man. I had no idea he was gonna show up today. That that was cool. <laughs> me neither. Yeah, what a surprise. <laughs> I love it when you do the like Jeff Dunham ass, like like talking to your puppet and he talks back thing where you have a conversation. It makes me <laughs> It's a fun uh, thing because then it just makes me seem like I'm a crazy person, you know? Yeah. I'm sure watching you do this to yourself is really fun. I'm sure your family is watching from outside the office, seeing him seeing you slowly lose your mind. <laughs> My wife's just staring at me in the eyes and just slowly shaking her head. It's like, Daddy's crazy. It's okay, honey. Daddy's just crazy. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> He's just going through one of his things. It's all right. It always happens. Um, <laughs> I want to shout out a game that was uh, brought to my attention. I shared uh, our buddy and our patron, Plufmot, who uh, is here sometimes. He has a game called Blue Boy Bleeding Out. He did the game. Actually, I believe Lewis did the art. If you know Lewis. If you don't know Lewis, you should know Lewis. It's... um. A cute little thing, and I uh, was lucky enough to receive a little copy of it, and I played it, and it's fun. It's called Blue Boy Bleeding Out. I'll put a link into it, but basically, it's a very simple game, very pixely, simple concept. You are Blue Boy, and you are bleeding out, but your blood is poisonous to you, and as you walk around trying to get to the door of wherever you are, the blood falls behind you, and you it's like you're laying mines and you have to walk around where you already were and try not to get hit by what you're uh, leaving behind you. It's a puzzler that is weirder than you think and more fun than you think, and it's very fun. So props to Blue Boy bleeding out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, um, I was playing this live in the server. I 
just thought it'd be fun to hang out with the community. Uh, and Angry Monk was there with me, watching me fail spectacularly as I uh, could not achieve even the most <laughs> basic <laughs> uh, victory in the game. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like me in any platformer. <laughs> it's yeah, it's fun. It's hard. It has one of those old school hard vibes. It is three ninety nine yeah. on Steam. I mean, for that price, it's just worth supporting an artist. You know what I mean? So just uh, go and buy it. It's fun. It's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then from our interview with with Brandy and George, um, like in our little post credit chat, we we were actually talking about, you know, retro flash games and ones that really stuck to us. And there was one. Uh, you know, if, I'm sure if you played a lot of flash games on Newgrounds, there's a good chance you played Toss the Turtle at some point. And yep, Will had a good story about shooting the turtle so damn hard that he fell continuously for about 30 minutes or so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying it was a good story. I appreciate that. <laughs> it was a good story because <laughs> we got, we got everything. You're like, you know, I just built it up and you know, I got, I'm so powerful. And then he just fell continuously for 30 hours at 15 minutes. I was like, I was euphoric. I felt amazing. And then after 30 <laughs> minutes, I was just bored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a kind of game where if you get him to go that long at 15 minutes, you're like, I'm going to win the high score. And after 30 minutes, you're like, I'm kind of done. I need to go eat dinner. I can't keep watching this turtle. <laughs> this is starting to not be cool. You come back yeah. two hours later and he's still falling. Like, I think I broke the game. <laughs> yeah. Now I just feel bad. <laughs> well, out of that story, we, we actually uh, came across a very, very funny and interesting uh, art piece that is in the art portal. So we're, pro- we're going to link it to you guys because we found it extremely funny. But we had a, a user who actually just took a screenshot of the Toss for Turtle start menu, posted it in the art portal, and left a description saying, this is the cover title of Toss the Turtle. And it actually yeah. has good ratings, and it had <laughs> one review. And the person said, I really love this game. It was really good. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> so we took it upon ourselves, George, Brandy, Will, and I, and we all left comments on this picture saying how breathtaking it was and how much we love the image. Just, just so you know, the guy didn't do like a, a cover of the cover yeah. itself. No, it's not OC. He literally just screenshotted the damn game and put it as an art. It's, it's completely <laughs> bullshit. And this is going to be like deleted probably in a couple of days. So if you want to make history before it does, go write a review. Go play along with us. Come on, go do it. <laughs> yeah, be a part of a community, everyone. <laughs> Tell him how great and sincere and original a piece of art is that he put on there. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> We're enabling something bad, aren't we? <laughs> this doesn't feel good. Pretty much, pretty much. But it, we hope it doesn't come off as bullying. We all mean it yeah. in good fun. It's let's just say it's a it's a good way to remember of a, a classic flash game. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think that about does it for us. What do you think? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh I can talk about how much I love you, Will, but I can ramble on about that. Well, that's all the time we have for today, everybody. (laughs) Thank you for coming on. I want to thank our patrons. So far, they are uh, Benny Plufmott, who had the game that we just talked about, Teresa Abinett, Boozle, Zachary Jones, and Tom Fulp. Tom Fulp! So thank you to you guys. If you want to be a patron, you can find us at patreon.com slash NG Podcast or something like that. We'll link it to you. Uh, the, The Patreon goes exactly back to other Newgrounds artists. So you're just supporting Newgrounds. And... Yeah, stick to uh, stay tuned. After this is over, we're gonna. I'm just gonna play the bonus clip from the Brandy thing. It's funny. You'll hear it. <laughs> but y'all have a good 2021. How about that? Thank you guys. Love you. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly/ngpdiscord for the latest news. Follow us on Twitter at the ng podcast thank you to water flame for the use of his song gabberfly goodbye we're gonna just do quick five rapid Lightning fire round. questions for you <laughs> and don't think about it you know how the game goes i'm gonna give you two options give us your answer all right oh, so the first one fear. apples or bananas bananas, bananas. oh that was unanimous dogs well what was it cats or dogs yeah no, it was dogs oh. or cats, George. Oh, oh, then cats. Mario or Sonic? Mario. Mario. It's easy. Fuck Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying which one's better or which one we'd rather bang? Because then I Sonic. I mean, it could go both ways. No, I'm going to bang Sonic, Sonic, but I like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fuck Mario and I'm going to kill Tails. <laughs> I'm going to plow Ritz. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> All right, Newgrounds or Reddit? Newgrounds. Wow, 
George, did you just stall there? Yeah, I'm thinking okay, about it. it. What do you uh, say now? <laughs> so, um, I'm going to say Newgrounds because I went on Reddit today to figure out how to not kill um, a plant of mine, and they still haven't replied. Mm. <laughs> they want your plant to die. Yeah. I mean, clearly. So, right, hey, if anyone out there knows how to revive a northern red oak, let, you guys hit me up. <laughs> Hopefully you get. It sounds your more like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, it's like a sapling. It's really small. Oh, okay. <laughs> later, just like, tried giving it mouth you, to mouth. George, you have a tree in your house. <laughs> All right, and then our final rapid question, and this is the one where you guys are going to fight to the death over. Who is the coolest one between you two? Wait, it has to be between us. Yeah, I do have the cool factor. I mean, d- did you see the sunglasses on my sprite? I did see them. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I wish I was able to. Dressed like Brandy, like he does in his avatars, but I just can't pull it off. Yeah, and he can grow a beard, and I can't. And every other guy I know can grow a beard, and I can't, so... Having a beard is pretty amazing. 